Hi, I'm Andy Howard, an Applications Engineer with Keysight Pathwave Design Software. In this video, I'm going to show how to use markers and indexing to analyze data in ADS. In ADS, you can run simulations with parameter sweeps of various dimensions. These are very useful for determining how different parameters affect your design's performance, or how a transistor's S parameters depend on the bias point, for example. These sweeps can generate a lot of data and you need a way to analyze it. This video shows some ways of using markers to select and analyze data. This is an example of a transistor's IV curves, selecting a bias point using a marker and plotting and displaying data that corresponds to the marker. The M bias point marker selects the bias point. Available gain circles in blue, noise circles in brown, and stability circles in red are plotted. On the left Smith chart, you can select a source reflection coefficient using the gamma S marker. Data corresponding to this marker is displayed. In the right Smith chart, you may select a load reflection coefficient. Data corresponding to this marker is also displayed. You might be wondering how the traces and calculated results are linked to the markers. I will show some of the details so you can use the same techniques to analyze your own data. Before I do, I want to mention that you can get this data display in corresponding schematic by selecting from any schematic, design guide, amplifier, DC and bias point simulations, FET noise figure, S parameters, gain, stability, and circles versus bias. This will copy a schematic and corresponding data display into your workspace. There are many other schematics and data displays for various applications in this and other design guides. The data display has multiple pages, each plotting different data. There are equation pages you may study if you want to see how the data is calculated. This page plots noise figure, dB of S21, S parameter data, and source and load impedances if matching for gain or minimum noise figure, all as a function of the bias point you select. Before I go over an explanation of how to use markers to select data, let's look at the schematic used to generate the data. How you set up the simulation affects how the data appears in the data set. In particular, the number and order of the independent variables. In this schematic, I have nested parameter sweeps with the top one sweeping VGS, which controls a DC analysis, which has a VDS sweep inside it. There's also another parameter sweep of VDS, which controls the S parameter analysis. The S parameter analysis is at a single frequency, but this could be a frequency sweep as well. The IV curves come from the DC analysis and the gain, noise figure, stability, and S parameter related data come from the S parameter analysis. This is the tracking marker simple data display. This plots a dB of S21 and dB of S11 and each trace corresponds to a different VGS value. The blue X on the S11 plot corresponds to the M1 marker location. To understand the dimensionality of your data, you can click on the Insert Listing Column icon to open the Plot Traces dialog. When you click on Variable Info, you see the dimensionality of the data. This shows there are 6 VGS values, 49 VDS values, and 1 frequency value. These are determined by the limits and step sizes of the sweeps on the schematic. I like to insert a small listing column and use the what function so I have something easier to see and reference on the page when I need to check the dimensionality of some piece of data. On the plot, I'm specifying the zeroth frequency which is the only one since the frequency was not swept in the analysis. This dB of S21 square bracket zero syntax is the same as dB of S21 square bracket colon colon comma colon colon comma zero. The double colon operator means use all the indexes for that independent variable. This is what you get if you plot dB of S21 without the square bracket indexing. The x-axis is the frequency by default. This is not very useful, so we plot dB of S21 square bracket 0 instead, which uses the new innermost independent variable VDS as the x-axis. 
Note that if you enter a 1 for the frequency index, you get a sweep access error. This is because the 1 specifies the second value of an index, and there is only one frequency value, the zeroth one. The left plot is of dB of S21, and I've placed a marker on a trace. As I move this marker, I want to see the corresponding data on a different trace. On the right plot of dB of S11, this is the blue X. You could imagine having many other plots or other data that correspond to the M1 marker independent values, which are VGS and VDS. Here's how this works. Double click on the M1 marker. Note that Enable Sweep Index Equations is selected. When you do this, additional equations become available in the data display. If you insert a listing column and select equations, you now see M1 VGS index and M1 VDS index. These are the independent index values that correspond to the VGS and VDS independent variables of the data at the M1 marker location. These are shown in a listing column and the values update as I move the marker. The blue X is a plot of dB of S11 square bracket M1 VGS index comma M1 VDS index comma zero. You must make sure you have the indices in the right order and the what function can be used to determine the correct order. I get an error if they are reversed. Also, I'm using the versus function to plot this single dB of S11 value versus the corresponding VDS value. If I don't plot using the versus function, then I get this. The y-axis value is correct, but the x-axis value is just zero. I can use the what function or just check the dependency of the VDS data. I select the correct VDS date value by using the M1 VDS index. Another option for selecting the independent variables is to use sliders. This is a plot of the DCIV curves, and these are the dB of S21 and dB of S11 data. The blue X's correspond to the independent values you select using the VDS and VGS sliders. These sliders are inserted using the insert slider command. Then you select the independent variable for each slider. After doing this, new variables corresponding to each slider are available. You can see their names by inserting a listing column and selecting equations. As I move a slider marker, the corresponding index updates. Also, moving the M1 and M2 markers, you see the blue X's move accordingly. As described above, you have to get the order of the indices correct. Markers can be used to zoom in on a limited frequency range of a trace. For example, the LPF S-params data display shows S-parameter data. Two markers on the lower left dB of S21 plot set the frequency limits for the zoomed input reflection coefficient and the zoomed lower right dB of S21 plot. The low-pass filter TB schematic has a multidimensional sweep that includes the values of L and C in a low-pass filter as well as the S-parameter frequency. The resulting data has three independent values as shown by the what function. The M1 and M2 sliders select a single pair of values and the green trace shows the corresponding S parameters. This is the same as what I showed earlier. I want to show an alternative way of selecting data. Say you want to select a particular response, see the corresponding independent variables, and also see corresponding other responses. How do you do this? The M3 marker is on a trace, and the blue traces correspond to the L and C values. As I showed earlier, we get indices corresponding to the M3 location by selecting Enable Sweep Index Equations. The blue traces all use the same syntax, and in this case, the double colon specifies that all frequencies be used. You could use the M3 frequency index instead to obtain the data corresponding to only the M3 frequency value. We also use these marker indices to obtain the L and C values corresponding to the M3 marker location. Note that since LVAL is the top level sweep variable, it has only one independent variable. CVAL has two independent variables, so we specify two indices. If I replace the M3 CVAL index with a double colon in the DB of S21 plot, I get traces corresponding to all of the CVALs.